It's only 40 more seconds until the new year begins. And after another annual cycle in the northern hemisphere of cyclones, hurricanes in the Atlantic, in the eastern Pacific, the year comes to an end. As many people now come together to celebrate a new year and a new digit being added to their number. And so everyone counted. Along with its previous two years, it had a low average activity, yet the destruction still remained. Many countries were still affected that year, amongst a few, the Philippines, Vietnam, China, Japan, and South Korea. Out of those, the Philippines received devastating hits by Typhoon Noru, and South Korea was hit by a weakening, but yet impactful Hinnomnor. But then again, we ask each other once more, will the 2023 season be just as inactive as the last few years? Will we have another season with dangerous and destructive storms? Find it out now. <laughs> this is still a trend they heavily underestimate how quickly these storms can rapidly intensify and i stress that the like especially in the western pacific these storms can have the potential to be extremely powerful and we're witnessing a storm that is about to realize this potential
Doc Suri, a super typhoon as we look at it on this live satellite imagery of the storm moving northwestwards closer and closer to the Philippine Islands. I'm just looking at the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency's forecast cone. They're actually forecasting a pressure of 925 millibars of the storm just off the northern coast of Luzon when it makes landfall in mainland China will only be a severe tropical storm, not even a typhoon. Well, I guess you're running with that as well, interestingly. Just look at the JTWC forecast. They're expecting... 90 mile an hour. Doc Surya has continued to track continually westward. Of course, there is still a lot of wiggle room for this storm. It still could go off on the northern side and make a landfall in central Taiwan or even southern Taiwan. And it likely has a cost to do so on the southern end and go into Luzon. And of course, if this storm does make a Philippine landfall, then this uh, day three, day four, and day five point would be a considerable southwestward shift. That means that Hong Kong could be at threat. Signal three warnings there, Babian Islands, northern and eastern portions of mainland Cagayan, northeastern portion of Isabella, and the northern portion of Apriel. something that wasn't necessarily outside of the realms of possibility, but Super Typhoon Saula, or locally referred to as Goring, has become a Category 5 Typhoon, and it is to pass the Baoyan and Matanis Islands, crossing the Luzon Strait and into the South China Sea in the latter part of its life. And as the storm continues westwards, anything from the coast of China short of Hong Kong or Hainan Island can get impacted pretty well. There are warnings across the Philippines, Signal 5 warnings in the northeastern part of the Baoyan Islands, Signal 4 for southern Batanes, north and southeastern Bawian Islands, Signal 3 warnings for the rest of Batanes, rest of Bawian Islands and Santa Ana, and Signal 2 warnings for northern and eastern mainland Cagayan, northern Ilocos Norte, and northern Apayao. Haikui has, uh, has strengthened into a typhoon and it's threatening Taiwan, possibly expected to make landfall as a category 3 typhoon. So here is Koinu approaching the southern tip of Taiwan, 
That was a Category 4 typhoon with a position of 21.8 degrees north and 121.0 degrees east. The cone shows it just passing through southern Taiwan and heading on to China and then will curve south, completely avoiding any landfalls inside of China. The West Pacific scores another Category 5 in the form of Balaban, 17.2 degrees north and 144 degrees west, headed away from Guam. Thank you.